just a really big uh, shout out of thanks to my brother-in-law who alerted me to a free uh, six meter by three meter polytunnel going on Facebook. Uh, you just have to go and dismantle it yourself and you can take it away for free. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I've said yes, I've gone and collected it. I've just dropped it off at the farm. And yeah, I plan to do something a little bit funky with it. It's um, a really low quality uh, polytunnel. Uh, the cover's going straight in the bin. That's got rips in it already. But I plan on doing something using the metal structure, a uh, slightly lower structure to do something a little bit funky on the farm. So watch this space over the next couple of months when it comes to me uh, putting that up and re either netting it or covering it for something a little bit different ready for next spring. But like I said, thanks to Tom and thanks to the guys uh, on Facebook uh, near me. Literally two minutes down the road, couldn't have been any better. It said you've got to dismantle it yourself. And when I turned up, we've got it all dismantled, tied into piles and uh, waiting for me on the front drive. So couldn't be happier. I uh, only just popped up here to drop off that polytunnel. I'm out of breath for a few trips to the car, but I'm gonna be a little bit sneaky. I hope my wife thinks it takes longer than it is and I'm gonna quickly put up my gate. As soon as I've got all the tools in the cart, do it. Um, if I can get it done quickly, she might not even know. I'm going to be at home having some dinner. Let's see how I get on. was an epic fail and probably served to be right for trying to do this quickly uh, first of all couldn't work out my new drill and uh, couldn't work out which bit to use uh, felt like a prize idiot and uh, secondly I haven't got a ladder tall enough to uh, whack it down with a fence posting so I need to go home and get a step ladder which means when I go home my wife's not gonna have it that I'll come back out here on a sunny afternoon so I'm done for the day what an absolute failure Oh, you live and learn, don't you? <laughs> the uh, good thing is, I discovered very early on that I couldn't do it. So I've hardly wasted any time. My wife probably still thinks I'm taking down the polytunnel that they'd already done for me. And uh, I can go home and pretend none of this ever happened. She don't watch my YouTube videos, so she should never find out. So I've just driven home, proper chuckling to myself, and this is my thought process on what the disaster that's just happened. I thought to myself, you know, I'll mix it up on the YouTube video, show me doing a bit of a DIY. I'm okay at it now. I've put up a fence around the farm. That's pretty impressive. And then uh, I switched the camera on and started doing it. And then obviously my drill bit was, I had no idea what I was doing. And I was starting to panic, starting to sweat, thinking, don't worry, don't panic about it. You can just edit it out, make, make it look like you did it really quickly. And then the enormity hit when I looked up and realized that I wasn't going to be able to reach to hammer in the pole. And I thought, well, I've got to share it with you guys. This is the, this is the real life, but this made me laugh. I rubbish at DIY. I've probably done something wrong. Oh, I wasn't measuring out the gate either. I was don't know what I was doing while I was putting the gate there. I wanted central, so oh, just a disaster. But here's what it is. You live and learn. It's chucking it down outside, so I've decided to do some seed sowing indoors. Originally, I wasn't gonna to plant too much at the farm this season, at the back end of this season over winter. I was, as I've, you've seen in previous vlogs, I was just gonna overwinter some garlic and some onions, but because I'm way ahead of schedule with the block building and bed building, I've decided to grow some winter lettuce and winter kales. Uh, just to try and test the ground along with the beetroots that are already in so here I am sowing the first of my seeds that will go directly and or are purposely sown for the farm it's the first time that I will be sowing in this kind of quantity so you know upwards of a hundred plug plants per variety 
Uh, with the lettuce, I'm trying some winter density, which is an absolute favorite winter lettuce of mine. Just seems to be really hardy and whatever the British winter throws it, it seems to survive. And I'm trying a variety called Four Seasons. I think it's called Four Seasons uh, for the first time. And I shall let you know and keep you updated how I find that variety. So they're my two lettuce varieties that I'm sowing in this video. As far as the kale goes, I'll be sowing a couple of trays of Cavalier Nero and a couple of trays of Red Russian. And believe it or not, I've never, ever, ever, ever grown Red Russian kale. But obviously it comes with brilliant reviews from anyone and everyone that's grown it online. So uh, it'll be the first time I'm giving it a go. Rumour has it that if you grow Red Russian kale over the winter, the uh, cold weather helps create starch, I believe, or sugars in the leaves and the kale tastes a little bit sweeter. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that one. As far as my sewing goes, I'm just using these 40 cell seed trays, uh, filling them three quarters up and you can see that I can press the soil down just a little bit to get rid of loads of the air pockets. I'm trying as best as I can to sow two seeds per cell just in case I have any problems with germination. And then just a light covering of compost over the top. Um, and again, slight compression to make sure the seeds have good contact with the compost. And they will go either in a little plastic greenhouse or on a windowsill, or this time of year, they can just be put straight outside to germinate. I can also utilize my grow lights once the seeds have germinated to give them a real early boost and get them going as quick as possible because we are getting towards the end of the season and I need to get these into established plants and in the ground before we start losing the light levels and the warm weather of the summer. If you follow Charles Dowding or any of the market gardeners out there, you'll see this is a pretty standard sort of way of starting off your seedlings. And like I said at the beginning of this little clip, uh, the difference for me is the pure quantity of these that I'll be doing. Uh, this is probably my first or second tray and I've got about 10 more to do, so i uh, best crack on. So my name's Annie, I own the greenhouse and I have been getting the Essex allotment veg box since the beginning of the year. Um, I love everything that comes in the box, I am veggie so I eat everything. It's so fresh and seasonal, I love that it comes from local, um, just by the road and is harvested that morning. It stays fresh for so much longer. Um, another key thing that I love is that I've obviously been able to host Alex and share it around the local community and everyone else has enjoyed eating these fab nutritious boxes of veg. So why do you get your veg box? Um, well I've been getting the veg box from the beginning and the reason I get it is uh, I like to support local. It's great that it's you know, picked a couple of miles away from your home. Um, I like the freshness of it and I also really like the challenge of having to cook from what is given to me every week. I think well, it's really good. What did you cook? What's been your most exciting experiment? Well last week was quite good actually because we had fruit for the first time. So we had some pears and rhubarb. So I made like a really nice pear, rhubarb and almond cake which is I'm not really a fruity cake person so I was pretty happy and it turned out fantastically. Brilliant. And my was great so. Oh thanks. Right, I'm back on the farm. Uh, I'm not gonna do too much filming because it's mega, mega, mega windy. But the good news is, and honestly, I did this myself after the debacle earlier in the video. I've only gone and got the gate on. Look at this.
So we're absolutely storming ahead on the farm. Uh, I couldn't be happier. I've had loads of volunteers, so things are moving really quickly. And although this wasn't in the planning for sort of like until October, uh, I've decided to crack on with block B, which means, you guessed it, we're back on to bed prep again. So I picked up this little hand tiller uh, just to help with some of the weed pressure and then we'll start moving more compost, more wood chips and building the beds. Uh, like I said, I couldn't be happier. Things are moving super, super fast and it's down to the amount of volunteers that I've had and the amount of help that they've given me. So um, here we are, bed block B even is under way and yeah, super excited. So all the beds are marked out on block B with string. Uh, as you've seen, I'm going over it with a little tiller slash hoe to get rid of the tiny bit of weed pressure I've got. And then I'm sort of spading out the pathways and putting them onto the beds. It's exactly the same preparation that I did for block A um, in all 10 beds of the block A. So we'll add just some soil amendments, which is chicken manure pellets, a bit of blood, fish and bone, and uh, then start piling on the compost. Over the course of Friday, Saturday and Sunday this weekend, I had three different volunteers and we absolutely smashed it and managed to get block B, the beds and paths, completely finished. So this was the view on Saturday afternoon after we'd done the first two days. And after three hours on Sunday morning, we got the beds and paths completely finished. So now they are ready to be fenced in. The final job for this week was just to prep one of the beds in block A ready for the cow to go in in a couple of weeks time. Um, what I'm creating here using the blue piping is a simple structure to put netting over and then maybe some fleece when winter sets in. Uh, so as you can see from the video, all I did was cut some small bits of bamboo and use them as pegs, put them in the ground about two meters apart and uh, slip the blue plastic tube in over the top of it. The hoops themselves are cut to two meter lengths and as I said, they're about two meters apart which should be plenty enough support to hold onto the netting. That's it, you're all up to date. That's all I've got done this week. So we're cracking on, things are moving really quickly. I uh, hope you enjoyed this vlog. Uh, hit the like button if you did. Think about subscribing so you don't miss a video in the future. And yeah, I'll see you next week.